Okay, good evening. This is, uh, my name is Nan Whaley. Oh, please come on this side. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if any of the city commissioners want to come and stand up for it, on this side, on this side. Uh. Okay, my name is Nan Whaley, uh, the mayor of the city of Dayton. I appreciate um, all of you who've been with us uh, since 7 a.m. this morning. Uh, we've had a briefing at 7, 10, 1, 3, and 4 o'clock. Uh, and certainly appreciate the work of Dayton Police Department and Chief Beal's team and Chief Bill himself. Uh, the Community Police Council, many whom I see standing here uh, behind the cameras have received this briefing as per is our uh, regular process. And if you could stand on this side, Commissioner Shaw. Um, <clears throat> uh, we are really appreciative of them taking the time as they always do, regardless of the incident. Uh, they come to our community to sit with the police department to discuss the response. Um, so I, I'm very grateful for them because even when there are um, incidents that don't get any press at all, they are there. And I want to make sure that they know how much the city commission and the city of Dayton and the police department appreciate their leadership. I also want to um, mention that tonight at 8 p.m. we will be having a vigil at the Oregon District on 5th Street. Uh, this is a way that you know this is our district this is our community and so we will be having a vigil everyone is invited to attend and encouraged uh, i want to recognize uh, everyone who's here um, of the elected uh, sort uh, obviously senator sherrod brown appreciate him coming down from cleveland senator peggy laner is here with us today appreciate her coming uh, commissioner shaw and mims who have been here all day just doing whatever needs to be done as well as commissioner fairchild uh, just having that support of um, uh, our community leaders and our state leaders has meant a lot to me personally and certainly I speak on the behalf of the citizens of Dayton that it means that uh, a lot to them as well okay so I'm going to turn it over to Chief Beal uh, this is a pretty typical piece that we do regularly on officer uh, uh, any kind of incident and certainly I just want to say that uh, uh, the the amazing amazing work of the police department and the fire department this past you know uh, uh 12 to 15 hours uh is is demonstrated but i'm really amazed at what they do every single day this is what they do every single day um and and i am so grateful to get to be the mayor of a city with such an outstanding police and fire department um chief richard Beale. thank you mayor so i'm here to provide an update uh, for what you are well aware is an active shooter that occurred in the oregon district in the early morning hours of today. A little bit of a timeline. Uh, today at 1.05 a.m., officers were patrolling the Oregon District during bar closing time and heard gunfire. Uh, they observed a large crowd running away from this gunfire. The officers immediately advanced toward the gunfire and within approximately 20 seconds, they engaged a suspect who was actively firing and attempting to enter a crowded liquor establishment. Threat was neutralized in approximately 30 seconds of the suspect firing his first shots. You will now hear a one of the 911 calls we received. We have an active shooter on Fifth Street. Okay, Fifth Street, what intersection? I don't really know. It's right outside uh, or on the wall. Okay, right outside. Long gun. One man had a bat, multiple shots, right at that vehicle. Okay. Get up that vehicle. Someone got shot there? I don't know if there was shot. You're shooting in the air. People are running and screaming. Active shooter up that vehicle. Get a bat. Get a shot. 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 We ran inside. We're barricading the door. You're inside the wall, wall crack. Currently, on inside. What, what line is this? Nuka? Yeah, we're inside Nuka. He was right outside Nuka. Okay, I got the call in, okay? Just stay on the phone. Thank you so much. Are you at Nuka? Thank you so much. We're at Nuka Tavern, downtown Bay End. Active shooter, adult male, about five. Eight, five, six, 
now you will see a video that was taken inside of one of the shops on 5th Street in the Oregon District. The suspect has been identified as a Connor Stephen Betts. He has a minimal criminal history as an adult. His traffic violations, speed, failure to control, and failure to yield. He was wearing a mask, a bulletproof vest, and hearing protection. He was armed with a .223 caliber-like rifle with 100 round drum magazines. He is uh, 24 years of age and he is deceased. Fatalities from this assault include Lois Oglesby, a black female, 27 years of age, Megan Betts, white female, 22 years of age. She is the suspect's sister. Saeed Salah, who is a black male, 38 years of age, Derek Fudge, black male, 57 years of age, Logan Turner, white male 30 years of age nicholas coomer white male 27 years of age thomas mcnichols black male 25 years of age beatrice curtis black female 36 years of age monica brickhouse black female 39 years of age in addition there are 27 confirmed victims who were injured and were transferred or transported to local hospitals for treatment basic overview of this scene of this entire incident uh, is now on your screen in the lower left hand corner you see a square that is the approximate location of the suspect's vehicle you know, that was parked um, and then the suspect left and then uh, went on to commit this assault the rectangular area toward the the right side and more center of the uh, diagram is where the suspect fires his first shots and killed his first victim. He then enters onto Fifth Street and then there are eight other victims killed by the suspect before he is fatally struck at the entrance to Ned Peppers, which is where the circle uh, designates. This is just the suspect's initial route. So you saw that square uh, block or box that was on the screen saying where he fired his initial shots. This is that area uh, illuminated in the daytime here and that red arrow is the pathway he took to get to Fifth Street. We're now going to show uh, a couple of videos of this event that will show graphic content. They will show police officers engage this individual. They will show multiple shots being fired. Uh, we have done uh, try to eliminate any video at this time that shows any victims who are shot. So we'll start with the first video. These are outside of Ned Peppers. Dayton police officer running around the top of the screen to engage the suspect. See the suspect enter the bottom right hand corner of the screen. That's him there entering or attempting to enter Ned Peppers when he is struck multiple times. And he stops there. And there's another video here, a little bit different angle. You see a lot of officers who are entering in from the upper left hand corner of this screen and begin heading down the roadway there to engage the suspect.
there's one officer there. Another officer coming. The patrol rifle. Additional officers responding. Officer with a sh or sergeant with a shotgun. Next is a um, photograph of the suspect's vehicle, which is a 2007 gray Toyota Corolla. Next is a photo of the firearm used by the suspect. And you see in the lower left-hand corner, those double drum magazines would have a capacity of up to 100 rounds. And on the lower right-hand corner, that, that firearm is identified. The officers involved in this, in the act of shooting in this event include Sergeant William Knight, Chad Knight, who is, came on in 1997 as more than 20 year veteran. The remaining officers uh, have been on it roughly about three years. They include Officer Brian Rolfus, Officer Jeremy Campbell, Officer Vincent Carter, Officer Ryan Nabel, and Officer David Denlinger. We've had extraordinary assistance from many, many different agencies. The Montgomery County Sheriff's Office, the Ohio State Patrol, the, the uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation represented uh, with us here on stage, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearm, also one of our federal partners joining us here on stage, Sinclair Police Department, University of Dayton Police Department, Five Rivers Metro Parks, Kettering Police Department, Riverside Police Department, Montgomery County's Coroner's Office, Huber Heights Police Department, Montgomery County Prosecutor's Office, Box 21, Red Cross, Bellbrook Police Department, and also uh, the U.S. Attorney of Southwest Ohio has joined us on stage, who had been very supportive and helpful in this investigation, which is ongoing. I'm uh, just going to remind you that we're you know, a little bit more than 12 plus hours into this event, so much is unknown. The Dayton Police Department Homicide Unit will be handling the criminal investigation. Administrative investigation will be conducted by Professional Standards Bureau, and that occurs any time an officer discharges a firearm. Per police department policy, for the five officers and one sergeant, we're going to be placed on administrative leave. That is per protocol. We are still asking for assistance in this investigation, notwithstanding the, the substantial local and federal and even state resources uh, dedicated to this investigation. If there's any information regarding this incident, we re regard it's requested to be relayed to the Dayton Police Department by calling the tip line at 937-225-6217. There's a Family Assistance Center has been established at the Dayton Convention Center where you are at and can be contacted directly at 937-333-8430. Mm -hmm. And for additional information, please follow our tw Twitter page at, at Dayton Police. That is the uh, entirety of the presentation. At this time, the status of this investigation. Um, once again, I reiterate, we are very, very early into this investigation. Any suggestion at this time of motive would be irresponsible. We do not have sufficient information to answer the question that everyone wants to know, why? We do not have that answer at this time. We will clearly pursue this investigation to try to understand motivation in this crime, assuming that there is a motivation that's understandable. So that's still before us. We have a lot of evidence to process through, from digital evidence to physical evidence to phone evidence. So much, much investigation is before us. Um, so we're very early on. This is very basic preliminary information I'm able to provide at this time. With that, I will open up to any questions you may have. I'm sorry, Mr. President. Yes, so you may have mentioned this earlier today, but there was a report that while the shooter had his rifle out, someone grabbed the end of the rifle, and so he dropped it and grabbed the handgun and started shooting, continued shooting. Is that true? We have no information to sub substantiate that at all. So as far as you know, it's just the rifle and no other gun. There was... There was a security officer after uh, the suspect was down who removed the rifle from underneath him or the weapon from underneath him. 
that happened, but I have no information to to corroborate what you were what you just mentioned okay. at all. We're gonna have to do this uh, in orderly fashion. No, she was not the first victim, but she was one of the initial victims. Uh, right as the he came out of that alleyway, she and a another male who is uh, was a companion of the suspect was shot and wounded. So they were uh, victims initially after the first person was shot. So very close proximity. In your department this afternoon, I believe, with other, with other agencies served a search warrant out at home out of Bellville. Can you tell us did you find more weapons and other evidence there and what type of yeah. evidence you may have found that I can't speak to the evidence that's recovered. Uh, we clearly did recover evidence. There, much of this we're going to have to examine, so I can't really comment further on that at this time. Okay? Can you tell us about the gun and where he got it? Well, there's more than one gun, um, but they can tell you that particular weapon that you saw was ordered online from Texas, but transferred to the suspect at a local uh, firearms dealer here in this area. There's also a shotgun that was acquired from a local firearms dealer here, two different dealers. But the ridge, that weapon originated in Texas. Speak to the legality of those weapons or the magnitude of the um, Let me say there's nothing in this individual's uh, history or record that would have precluded him from purchasing that firearm. Is that magazine illegal, a uh, 100 round magazine? There is no in indication that that is illegal at this time. Is there anything significant to mentioning the shooter's race? To mentioning it? Yeah. Is there any significance? Is there a possibility that should be investigated at this time? I don't think I understand your question. He's a white male. Yes, right. Is there any significance to mentioning that? Is that like an ace line? Right. We have no evidence to suggest that this there is a biased motive in this crime at this time. It is certainly dozens were fired. I don't think we have an absolute count at this point, so I don't want to put a number out there and have it not be accurate, but dozens of rounds were fired. Well, I would tell you that what was crucial in their response was the availability of both shotgun and patrol rifle. Uh, that was crucial. That was a commitment we made uh, really well over a decade ago and even added to that inventory uh, since my tenure as chief. I'm in my 12th year now. So recognizing the potential threats that we could face, um, particularly people wearing ballistic armor, we know we have to have the kind of uh, equipment and weaponry to be able to thwart that. Uh, that was pretty crucial in this case, and I'm sorry, you had, I think you had a question. Was the shooter with this district prior to the shooting? Yes, yes. They have, the information we have is they all came in the same vehicle, but they separated at some point. Was there an altercation in the vehicle before? No information in that regard. Yes. Well, I think you can imagine this is a nightmare uh, for them, and uh, I think they are struggling, as you can understand. Have they spoken at all? Have they said We've had a chance to have contact with them, yes, we've had. Any indication that he was influenced by El Paso, the incident out there? Pardon? Any indication that he was influenced by the incident in El Paso? We have no information to suggest that, um, none at have this time. A, have you had a chance to talk to her boyfriend? If he came in the car with them, he knew that We had an opportunity to talk to the individual who uh, rode in a vehicle with him. So with that his part of our investigation, that's ongoing. Any information on when the vest was purchased or where that came from? Yes, we do have that information, but we're not going to release it at this time. So. We're hearing from classmates of his from Bell Brook. Yeah. They, when he was in here, they argued that it had a hit list. Mm -hmm. I can't confirm, and I'm going to come because this is going to speak the potential motive, right? I mean, that's what people are trying to get to here. There is far too much information that we have to review before we can even begin a conversation about possible motive. And I will not talk about any uh, potential slice of evidence, is value or not, at this time. It's just way too early. Chief, you said there were two weapons? Yes. 
So he had two, he had a shotgun and an assault rifle on and, him. And I'll just reconfirm. We have a, the shotgun wasn't. The shotgun was in the vehicle, the uh, assault rifle. Was yeah, so there are two weapons, but one of which was used in the assault. One he left in the vehicle. Yes. That he took to the place with his sister and her friend. Well, let me just say that those weapons eventually wound up at that location. They separated at some point uh, later in that evening. So what he did during that time that they were no longer together is a question mark in our investigation and something we're going to have to, to determine. Was anything found at the house? I think that question was already asked, and I said we're not going to talk about any evidence uh, at this time. Yeah, I, I don't have a number for you right now. We were trying to confirm that. We, we basically do ballistic checks, so we look for shell casings at the scene. But then we have to match that against magazine capacity and, and rounds missing, and that's not always a precise um, comparison. So I don't have a precise number for you at this and time. all the deceased victims were killed by him and not by the other? We don't have any reason to believe that any of the persons deceased uh, were shot by other than the assailant at this time. Any was the time sister when they may have split up from that point? Hang on, what's that? Any time when they may have split up, did they, the suspect they did at some point in time. I don't think we have a, a precise time for that, but clearly it was some point in the evening that they did part ways. Do you know what time they all arrived together? I don't have that yeah, available to me right now. I mean, I don't have that specific information. So. Well, did he shoot at, at your officers? Hang on. <laughs> did he shoot at your officers, or was he, um, you know, killed? Before? I don't think we have that known with absolute certainty. There was a vehicle shot early on in that exchange, uh, right, before, right as our officers were uh, either engaging or about to engage. So I can't really speak to that precisely. Was the sister and the companion targeted by the shooter, or were they part of just an indiscriminate That's really something we can't tell at this point. Uh, it's, it's a question, it's a nagging question, uh, and I just don't have the answer. We're trying to sort through that ourselves. Did any other victims, did any other victims know the shooter? Not that I'm aware of. Not that we're aware of, so we really don't know if there, that was somehow of importance. Is any of the 27 other victims, are they in critical condition? How are they doing? Are any of them still alive? We don't have, I think, anything precise on the other 27, do we? There's been no one critical, one's critical. Chief, how would this incident change how the Well, you know, it's interesting because we already have a concentration present there just because it's, it's an entertainment venue. We realize a lot of people come to Oregon District. I've been there very recently. Uh, so certainly we know a lot of folks will be there, and we have police officers present because of that reason. So will this cause us to evaluate? We will evaluate everything that touches on this incident just to uh, determine whether or not we do need to do anything differently. But there were certainly plenty of officers present that acted virtually instantaneously and effectively ended this in 30 seconds. Can you talk about your officers? You, you went through the times that they used, but just the fact that they were able to be there for five seconds. It was crucial. Had this individual made it through the doorway of, of Ned Peppers, with that level of weaponry, there would have been a catastrophic injury and, and loss of life. So stopping him before he could get inside there, where you saw all the people, they were running in there for protection, was essential in minimizing the degree we could casualties and deaths from this incident. Did the shooter have a chance to reload? I'm not aware of that being the case. And did you have any information about legally? They were obtained legally, yes. I just did you have any information that yeah. the shooter, the suspect, talked to anyone, spoke to anyone, yeah. as this was going on? None, Mike, none. No. Now, Megan Best, she was there with his, his friend, right? And when right. she was fatally shot, he wasn't hit at all? No, he was, he's one of the ones that was injured, transported to the hospital. One of the 27 injured. That is correct. Okay. What, what was the suspect wearing? There was reports of a mask, and then the wounded body armor leaning like over the vest, or was there more? Than yeah, ballistic vest. And a mask of some sort? Uh, some sort of a mask, correct. 
I don't have that information available. Just to clarify, the companion, that was the shooter's companion or the police officer's companion? Well, let's say it was one and the same. Okay. They all came together. I do want to pause for a minute because I want to, like, the, the FBI has a, a, a site that we want to get out publicly. Todd, if you can come join us and introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Todd Wickerham. I'm the FBI special agent in charge for this part of the state. And um, www.fbi.gov, Dayton shooting, right? So one word, Dayton shooting, after www.fbi.gov backslash Dayton shooting. And what we can, uh, people can submit there, if they have videos, if they have other social media uh, associated with this shooting that they think would be of value to the investigation, this is where they can go to upload this to get it in the right hands as we're working uh, jointly with Dayton on this investigation. Thank you. And Ben, do you want to mention anything regarding the Department of Justice um, attention to this matter? Um, Chief, I just wanted to say on behalf of the United States that the Department of Justice, as you can see, uh, has been working closely, uh, giving our full support to Dayton in its investigation. The United States stands with Dayton. Our condolences to the victims uh, and the families of the, of the deceased. Uh, and obviously the United States is going to provide all resources that it has at its disposal from any agencies in order to further this investigation to its completion working with the Dayton police. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it. Will this PowerPoint be on your website or Yeah, you can, we can get it to you, but we'll, we'll get the video. We have to find a way to do that because there's a lot of you here, and so we got to figure out how, what that looks like. So maybe it's out there in a public domain you can access. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to talk that through. Um, that's a technological piece I don't, I don't have mastery over right now, so we'll have to come back to that. Right, right. How badly How injured is the We have six. So a sergeant and five officers fired at least one round. Right. How many yes. How badly injured is the companion and has he had a chance to talk to investigators? Yeah, I answered that previously. Uh, he was wounded, but not so serious that we were not able at least to have some initial conversation with him. How many so. officers were on patrol in the Warden District at the time of the shooting? That I don't have a great answer for. I can tell you six of them were there that engaged. That I can tell you. What is the training like for officers to um, be look at the scene? I guess in the previous press conference, you're trying to prevent something like this from happening. Some of the things that were said was to really be on watch and look. I mean, the, the reaction was quick. But is there any training that officers receive to scope out? You know, they see this somebody wearing a ballistic vest. I mean, certainly there's, there is training. I mean, even looking at someone's gait, how they walk can be suggestive of uh, carrying a firearm. Certain mannerisms can be suggestive of them carrying a firearm. Uh, this firearm wasn't hidden, so this wasn't hard to, to probably figure out once it emerged. But for weapons that are more concealable, that's a little bit more of a challenge, but there are some ways for people to, for police officers in particular, I might say, to have some indication that person may be armed and be able to take action. Well, it wasn't sold in that in that final condition. That has some level of modification to it. In and addition to the barrel, sometimes you change the rate of fire. Too. Yeah, so there have been some modifications, and I, I can't speak to those in specific, but it wasn't sold in that particular um, state. And this gun was an AR-15, not an AK-47, right? AR-15-like, like would be a properly, probably a, the right way to say that. Chief, Deputy Chief Carver talked about some electronic We, we, did, we have digital evidence, um, we have phone evidence, so I don't want to get into greater detail there, but clearly we're looking for any kind of uh, evidence we can. This day and age, a lot of evidence is digital. Does that get into social media? Yes, yes, yes. How much was the shooter on your radar? Uh, was he known to you on some Not at all, not at all. Were you know the vehicle was weapon registered to? Was it his vehicle? Do we know who the vehicle's registered? To his father. Yes. Not this particular type of event, no. No. We've had some multiple casualty uh, shootings, but they weren't what we would describe as an active shooter. So this was what you're speaking here is the larger fatality that you dealt with? 
certainly my tenure. Yeah. That's what's not known. It's just not known. So we, we can't say that with precision, whether the weapons were there all the time or after they separated, that's when the person went and got equipment and geared up. We just don't know at this time. We're hoping to determine that. Collectively. Collectively. Correct. Not that I'm aware of. Do your officers carry any magnitude of bullets like that that we are on? No, no. Would there be any use to your officers carrying that many rounds at a time? I don't, I don't even know it's a question. I'm going to kind of speculate here. We carry sufficient. I mean, we do have the abil availability of additional uh, rounds should we need them, and we deploy those in a way to sense that we think makes sense. I'm not going to say what that is. We need to resolve every piece of, certainly evidence, evaluate every piece of evidence that we have now and will receive until the point we believe we have no more evidence to review. And that includes interviewing, however we need to interview, that may be able to shed light on this individual's um, conduct in the recent days as well as any historical information we think would be important to know that could explain conduct ultimately. So until we have what we think is the known universe of, of evidence, uh, we're going to keep pursuing this investigation. I just don't know when that's going to be. I don't have the information. And folks, I've told you everything I really can share today. You'll probably ask a lot of questions again I've already answered. Um, that's going to conclude this interview. I appreciate your attention in this matter. I ask you to lift up the victims in this event and give them the honor and dignity they deserve in their lives and for their tragic, ultimately avoidable death. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. That's going to conclude our press, release, press conferences for the day. I'm sure we'll have more in the coming days ahead. I appreciate your patience. I appreciate you working really diligently to confirm any information that you have had today. I ask you to continue to do that. If we're not giving you the information, there's a reason why, because the investigation is underway. I want you, I'm asking you, since we've been so forthright in these conversations, to respect that back to us as well and make sure that before you put anything up, that you have it uh, confirmed. Okay? Thank you for being great today. No more press conferences this evening it planned, okay? 8 p.m. on the vigil, vigil tomorrow. We don't have any, we don't have our time scheduled for tomorrow, but you all will be the first. Well, no more press conferences tonight. The vigil's at 8 p.m. tonight in the Oregon District, okay? No more press conferences tonight. I'm sure we'll have press conferences tomorrow. You all will be the first to know. After the vigil, it will be open to traffic. And it will be open to the public. Can we public now to walk in? Can we walk complete public walk again? Yes, they can walk through now. Public can walk through now. I should also mention the Oregon District uh, Transportation Garage is free tonight for people to, if that want to come down to, to be a part of the vigil, they can come and just go and park in the Oregon District Garage. Okay? Thank you.